All right, welcome back. And today we are going to do a question called longest increasing subsequence. You are given an array of integers, return the length of the longest increasing subsequence, not necessarily contiguous in an array. So what a longest increasing subsequence is, is that can you give me a, a list of like numbers within this array that goes from left to right? It doesn't need to be contiguous. That means it doesn't need to be all stick together like this. Can you give me something like that where the number of uh, elements in that subsequence is the highest? So for example, if we look at this, the longest subsequence would be 0, 2, 6, 9, 11. So as you can see, I went from left to right. So that's how that's what a subsequence is. Like for example, if I choose 0 and 8, the longest subsequence would be 0, 8, uh, maybe 10, 11 and then 15 right so you cannot go lower once you choose a number and then you just have to go through it and then you have to find which one which subsequence is the is the highest yeah like uh, what how many numbers there are so the great thing here is that we don't actually need to output the subsequence itself we only need to output the size like the length so that would give us a hint um, usually questions like that it's related to either recursion or dynamic programming. So this question is a dynamic programming. And because we have an array, that also gives us a hint. It's that we can store information about the array as we go and then use that information back. For example, let's think of uh, actually, let's go to the drawing board. Yeah. So don't look at cache for now. This would be this is kind of a hint, but don't look at this for now. Just look at the input array. Imagine if I was 10. Imagine if my array was this size, right? Just like this size. And at the end, I want to know. So technically, the size of this um, of the subsequence would be what are the longest subsequence here that at the end of the subsequence is smaller than my number? If that's the case, then the subsequence here, the longest is that one plus one, which is myself, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So Imagine if I already have the answer for the longest subsequence for this array, this array, this array, this array, right? Like what I mean is I, I have the answer for this array, like zero, I have the answer for zero, eight. So for example, the answer for zero is one because I can only get zero. For this subarray, it's two because I can have zero, eight. For four, it's also two because I could only go zero and then four or zero and eight. That's it, that's the max size. And then for 12, uh, let's see, it's one, two, three or one, two, three. So it's three here. But another way of looking at it is I could have said, okay, well, what is the longest subsequence in all of these? Uh, arrays like if it was a one array or two array or three array then what was the longest then I see that two is the longest and then I also check is the last number of the sub sequence smaller than me if it is then I could add one to it right so that's pretty much what you do and then that's exactly it that's dynamic programming so let me do the whole array just to make it clear so you can understand uh, what I'm doing and what's going on so like I said okay zero I start with one element, so that's easy. It's just one. And then max currently is one. Max, we're gonna calculate this for each iteration. So for example, eight, we're now at this guy, okay? We're at eight now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the pass element. Okay, so there's one here, excellent. Am I bigger than zero? Yes, I am, so what I can do is I can add one to this number, so it's two. Okay, and then now I'm at four. I'm at this guy now, and then I do the same thing. I iterate over the whole thing. So currently the max is one. Am I smaller than zero? Yes, it is. So max is one, and then I check for the next one, which is two. Oh, awesome. Am I smaller than eight? No, I am not. So max is still one, and then that's it. I'm done this iteration. So I could do one plus the max, which is two. All right, let's do 12 now. 12, uh, I look into this array, I look at one. Okay, so now max is one. Okay, am I smaller than zero? Yes, I am. All right, is 12 smaller than eight? Yes, I am. So what is the value here? It's two, all right. Oh, two, excellent. So now I got 
two plus one, so that would be the max. Okay, do do do. I guess three like this. Okay, oops, darn it. So actually, I could just keep the max as two because we're just gonna add one later, and we're gonna keep it as max here. And then I'm gonna look at the other one. Am I smaller than four? Yes, I am two, but two is the same as the max, so it's fine. And now I add one to it because of myself. All right, cool. Now we do the same thing with two now. Let's look at from the beginning. All right, one, am I bigger than zero? Yes, I am. So now the max is back to one. Okay, and then um, I look at eight. Okay, I'm smaller than eight, so I don't do nothing. I'm smaller than four, I do nothing. I'm smaller than 12, I do nothing. So here max is one, so one plus one is two, right? So we do the same thing with 10. We do zero, same thing. We are bigger than zero, so one, so max is currently one. Am I bigger than eight? Yes, I am, so now max is two. And then we look at four, am I bigger than four? Yes, I am, but it's only two, so max is already two right now. 12, it's three. Unfortunately, I'm not bigger than 12, so I cannot update this to three. And then later on, you'll see I get three. Same thing, so we could do this faster now, but we could do six, okay, it's bigger than this number. Okay, it's four, it's bigger than this number, it's two. Okay, so this would be three. And then 14, it's bigger than eight, excellent. Okay, so the max is two. It's bigger than 12, all right, the max is three. It's bigger than 10, which is uh, three, but it's already three. These are all the biggest three, okay, it's fine. So it's gonna be four here. One, we're gonna do again, so it's bigger than zero, excellent, but that's that's it, it's only bigger than zero, so we're gonna have two here. And then nine, uh, we're gonna look at, okay, it's bigger than eight, that's two, okay, that's cool. Is there any number that is smaller than nine, but has a bigger number here? No, so eight is three. Yeah, and then we finish, uh, let's see, da, da, da. and then, wait, did I do something wrong? Uh, I, I did one thing wrong here. Nine is bigger than six, and six is three, so nine should be four. And then we continue doing this, five, let's see, it's bigger than this, two, it's bigger than four, so it's three, and then 13, I could do it quickly, it's bigger than nine, nine has four, so it's five, and then three, it's, um, let's see, two, 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 there's a two here, okay, it's probably three. So then the answer would be four, right here. Yeah, so then this would be your longest subsequent, so that's the result. All right, cool. So now let's talk about the time complexity. So, the time complexity, what do you think it is? Well, first we have to go through the whole input one by one, and for each of this value, we go through the cache multiple t uh, one time. So that's a O of N movement here for this array, and then for each time we go through a loop, that's another O of N. So that means O of N times O of N, so that makes O of N squared. And then space complexity, uh, we need this cache, so that's linear O of n, because this cache will be as big as the input, which is O of n. So space is O of n, time is n squared. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's code it up. So the first thing we do is um, we make sure that there is something in the array. So that's just the base case. We're gonna return zero if not. And then what do we want? We first want the cache array, okay? So we'll all set it to one. Oops, because that is the uh, minimum amount you can get because if you're a single number you're number one so us instead of uh, instead of keeping a max we're just going to use the value itself on the array as the max because because uh, it's going to be a lot easier and you don't need another extra variable so first what do we do we iterate through the array so in range one length array okay so we iterate through all the array and then for each of um, for each of the value like we did last time we're going to iterate through the cache okay so we're going to iterate through the cache until our own value okay so now well, what we want to do is we only do something if the um, the current value is bigger than the value on your left wherever you are and then if it is then your new max, we're gonna call it cache i because it's uh, we're just skipping the max, is gonna be the max of whatever the value is, like currently. So this is basically the max, cache i is the max. Or if the value that you see plus one is bigger than you, 
right? So if it's bigger, then you update the max. That's pretty much what that does. So instead of using the max um, variable, we're just gonna keep it in the cache already. And then at the end, you just return the max of your cache array, and then that would be your longest subsequence. So let's try it out here. This should give you six. This array is kind of the same array as uh, the example, except that in the example, I stop, I stop here because I, I just didn't have space anymore. So it should give you six. Oopsies, forgot it's Python 3. All right. And then there you go, it's six. Now, one thing we can do is um, to make it easier to understand, we could also print the cache so that I could kind of illustrate to you what it looks like. So remember on our example, it's one, two, two, three, two, three. That is essentially what you're calculating. And then in the end, you just take the max of this whole ray. It happens to be the last element, but it might not always be like this case. But yeah, so that's the whole cache array. And yeah, that's pretty much it, this dynamic programming. All right, I hope that was uh, interesting, and uh, I'll see you next time.